and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Safara spirits. We have yet another donation deck. We've had some awesome viewers here donating some decks with this new format. Wanting to see them played. Okay, you want to come up here? Maybe not. Um, so what what we have here is we have like a spirit tribal uh, deck with you know a whole lot of flying spirits, of course, where we have our one sweet Safara. So we can play the Safara by tapping four untapped creatures we control with flying uh, and paying a white mana instead of paying its mana cost. We'll see if we ever really get to play Safara too much or not, but it's in here. So our deck is kind of looking a little bit like Mono Blue with the Curious Obsessions and Siren Storm Tamers, but that's about where those uh, where those similarities kind of end. We got some new sp spirits with the Spectral Sailor, which I, I'm really big into this card. I like this card for just a single mana, getting a Flash Flyer that can also just pay for to draw cards. I like this one quite a bit. Um, the Hanged Executioner gets to make two spirits um, and can also, you can spend four mana to exile it to exile another creature. And then we have, very importantly, the Empyreon Eagle. Give all of our creatures we control with flying plus one plus one. The Supreme Phantom's in here giving all of our other spirits plus one plus one. So we can um, we can really pump up our flyers with having eight Lord effects here. Plus, I guess we even have a couple favorable wins. So, you know, we have 10 effects, I guess Anthem effects here with our deck. Dovin can make some Thopters to help us cast the Safara. Um, that's what Dovin's doing. And then for protection, we have some God's Willings and Dovin's Vetoes. Pretty cool looking deck here. Um, yeah, pretty cool looking deck. So let's give it a try. Let's see how it works. Flying Spirits. Here we go. The Safara Spirits. It's certainly possible that the Safara is not actually worth it here in the Spirits deck, but we're trying it. You know, it's new, uh, new set, new cards. We're trying all sorts of stuff here this week. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see if we have the Spirit of the cards. All right, nice opener. We got Turn 1 Storm Tamer. Turn to Curious Obsession it and have God's Willing protection. Oh, do the other way, Solid. Do exclamation point, then deck. Do I pet Hawkeye over here or do I pet Hawkeye over here? Protection from red. Yeah, I want the eagle. Eagles are cool. I think I'm still keeping up Dovin's Veto for a little bit here, though. But Ego's a nice backup option. All right, land drop. Okay, cool. Well, we got the red, the red finale shut down.
Yeah, and they're, if they're playing Is It Phoenix, you know, like we don't know if they are or not. Like Blink of an Eye is not really a card you see in Phoenix usually, but if they are a Phoenix deck, Remorseful Cleric can shut down those Phoenixes from coming back. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the t special 12 hour stream today. Hey, what's up, Blood Wolf? Thanks for that support. I really do appreciate that. Got a new subscriber here, getting the hype in the channel. All right, 15th subscriber of the day. Halfway to our next sub goal there. Uh, with the going from 10 to 20. Why do we have this this card in our deck? We have this card in our deck because our deck is a spirit deck with a whole lot of flyers. And so it makes two creatures, two one ones. But if if it's making two two twos or two three threes, when you got these other things, it starts being a lot more powerful. Plus it gives us a creature that's removal as well. We haven't played Chandra Tribal yet. You see, we're going down the going down the line here. We're really giving our opponent the bird. Spirit, that is. The bird spirit. Wonder if our kitty cat likes all these birds. Should have a blue kitty cat. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. They didn't play anything that whole turn. Uh, you played against this person yesterday and they just dis disconnected yesterday. So yeah, maybe they did disconnect. I don't know. <sighs> Alright, nine and a half hours in to our 12 hour stream today. We do a normal stream tomorrow, but there's still so many decks I want to play. Been playing lots and lots of donation decks so far. Haven't played my own decks too much yet, but we got lots of time for that. I'm not expecting to miss a stream day for a couple of weeks. At the very least. Be here streaming. M20. Every day. Alright, yep. Looks like they did disconnect. Yeah, Risen Reef is crazy. Crazy. Card's very good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I remember that Slimefoot combo deck that you made me play there, good brother. I remember that. Alright, so we'll get rid of one of the two Hanged Executioners. Siren Storm Tamer is like our only creature that's not a spirit, so it doesn't get the plus one plus one from the Phantom.
Hmm. So let's see, you know, basically, do I want to keep up God's willing or not? Do the hanged executioner, it can hit hard hit pretty hard this next turn. Poison tip archers. That card does have reach. And it has death touch. I guess we play this and then we still have gods willing up. You know, do not want to attack in with the two four. That would it would just kill. So at least it it can block it either of these three threes. Yeah, attacking in with like the the two four also, just letting them block there and just basically trading the the gods willing for just a block isn't isn't really ideal. Alright, well that's gonna be game. Those are some big flyers. Big flyers. So I don't know what our opponent's doing. They're just kind of playing some Golgari stuff. Just kind of playing some stuff. I'll just keep this the same. I was considering taking out Dovin's vetoes. Nothing in the sideboard was like anything that I really wanted. I really want to play Chandra Tribal. I don't want to push that back to be the very last deck. I want to play that deck. We're going to play Chandra Tribal after this. I want to play some Chandra Tribal. The Chandra Regulator. And all four Chandra Planeswalkers. Perfect. Good looking hand here. A planes? Are we in a new match now? We just went Island Go. Our opponent probably wasn't expecting, after we went Island Go, probably wasn't expecting to get hit with a 2-2 flyer that draws cards whenever it deals damage. Probably not expecting that. All right, I want to keep this God's Willing available. Kaladesh will not be the next set. It's going to be a long time before we go back to Kaladesh, but it's it's not going to be the next set. It's way too soon for returning to a plane. There won't be Kaladesh again for another, I don't know, like 
three years, four years, like at the very earliest, like four years from now. Yeah, three. It's not going to be within three years even. Now, with that being said, they are going to a lot more planes these days per year than what they used to. So I guess it is possible for it to be earlier. Bleh. Could have double phantomed. Well, it's not going to be four planes a year because of our core sets. Because of the core sets. But yeah, it's like three. We could have upwards of three planes a year instead of. I mean, it, it was. It used to be just one plane a year, and then they moved it to two. And then they were like four. And then they're like, well, wait, not four anymore. Now we have core sets. Like the next day. Hmm. That card's actually kind of big. So I can put them down to one, right? Like if I, if I go Phantom and Eagle and they block Sailor, they gain five life, but they take five, eight. Yeah, they take eight. So they go to nine, take eight. So they go down to one. Doesn't quite kill them. Hmm. I'll just play the Hanged Executioner. They can kill the Lyra next turn and keep this Dovin's Veto available still. The executioner's removal. I was I was consider honestly what I was considering, also another line that I was considering was playing both of my lords out and just attacking with the Supreme Phantom and the Remorseful Cleric. And with the Remorseful Cleric having two more power and basically trying to bait them into maybe blocking the Remorseful Cleric. And if they did block Remorseful Cleric, then I would have been able to just sacrifice the Remorseful Cleric so they wouldn't have gained life and they would have died. And basically just kind of testing them to see if they would have realized that and... or if they would have blocked the Supreme Phantom. But honestly, we just didn't need to do that. You know, it wasn't... It wasn't a necessary play. It would have been like a... a cool little play of... yeah, we got him kind of thing, but it... Just wasn't necessary, you know, you just wait a turn and play the hanged executioner and then win by a lot. Alright, Tuno. With Safara Spirits. Like this deck to fairy? Yeah, this was uh, Good Brother made this deck.
Nope, no shalies in the deck. Huh. Slower hand here. The winds are very favorable. So the only two favorable wins in the deck. Birdies. The cat's like, give me those birds. We got some big birds. I was watching Sesame Street the last time I saw a bird this big. Oh, at least I know I don't have to worry about Settle the Wreckage. It's nice of them. I guess maybe I should have just activated this draw. What if I... Okay, good. I was like, what if I just drew God's Willing if I would have just played my land, drawn a card, and then gotten God's Willing there? If you show remorse, the Sailor's a good card. It really is. Good quality card. Unfortunately, the Safar has just been kind of dead in our hand as we just only had lands. We get to play it next turn, though. There'll be a 9 9. How's the opponent even deal with a 9 9? They probably can't. They'll probably just die on the spot. No, this deck does not need Spark Double. Nine nine concede. They're like, wow, that Safar is sending us back to Brooklyn. Hurry. It's the only place where you can handle a nine nine like that. I can no longer hmm. stand by and watch. I guess the fairies Don't from worry. Brooklyn. I got this. My prowess is I have just the trick for this. Oh, stupid Narset. Dang. Yep, have to draw on their turn. But so I was debating between, you know, drawing on, on my turn or their turn when I was thinking about it. And I was like, well, we, you know, may just draw a two drop or something we want to play. But no, nope, Narset. You 
know what. All right, looks like we're under the hard lock now. Here I can't think of a good card to draw. That's really not it. All right, so we get a bunch of spell pierces in here. Yeah, it's been like just all Esper today, basically. It's been all Esper. All right, well, our worst cards are probably, or, you know, like, we only drew five cards that game, and three of them are our worst cards. The favorable wins in the Safaros. We don't really need those in this matchup. The problem with M Mu Yanling here is that minus three making a, a token, the little Teferi bounces the token so easily. Don't know if I'm supposed to be bringing in Little Teferi over the other Hanged Executioners. Get him, sailor. Wish the eagle had flash. Wish all of our cards had flash. If I would have drawn the land, I would have played Eagle, so I could have still had Spell Pierce up. So I, obviously I could Dovin's Veto that, but then that lets them have like a cast down available. So I let them see the hand, they take the Veto. I still have the Spell Pierce available for this turn. They of course know about the Spell Pierce, know to play around it. That was just like the one the one combination of cards or like you know that's the the one card that I could lose to. I I mean I could have just waited still on the eagle and just drawn card with Sailor. Just go for the card draw there.
this isn't a Bounce the obsession. Anyway. You always do the obsession, right? Nah, I didn't do the obsession. It's alright, obsession still cycled, delta damage. These spell pierces don't do anything with little Teferi on the battlefield. I'm just going for it with them being at three. Just have to turn on the, the spell pierces. I, I'm hoping they activate Escanta, of course. This is so close. All right, so do we draw one of our other? I guess we have six more Lord effects. We got our two draw steps, one with the sailor here. There we go. All right, we got a game. Going to game three. Man, that sailor is such a good one drop. All right, well, Hanged Executioner saved us against the Lyra. So I probably shouldn't be cutting them. I feel like I'm supposed to be bringing in the little Teferi, but I don't want to go down on creature counts at all, so it'd have to go in instead of like Spell Pierce, Dove in. It's kind of about the only things to be taken out. Come on. That's really unfortunate. Hey, Radio Pinball. Thanks for that resub. I appreciate that. Uh, getting really punished for not for putting the land underneath. It's the kind of card that you know, if I don't put the 
If I don't put the land underneath and then we just draw two lands, we're like dead. But if I do put the land underneath and we don't draw lands, then we're dead. It's it's the kind of you know it's the catch twenty two. Come on. Why can't I just put that land underneath? And heck, no. Man, getting so punished for just putting that one land on the bottom. Unreal. So they know about the spell pierce. Just want to get that out of my hand, even though that does make me worse against the Teferi. The five mana Teferi, that is. I don't know if I'm supposed to be bottoming that, to be honest. They're almost dead. No white, no white, no white source. No white source! Woo! We did it. We defeated Usper. Hooray! Safari Skies, 3 0. Yeah, we could have named white or black either one with the God's Willing. It doesn't matter. With the multicolor card, you can name either one. So, JRC, I would not, in three color decks, I would not re replace the dual lands with temples in the three color deck, no. This will do. Oh, if I would have named black, I could have blocked the hostage shaker. True. Oh, awesome, Pudsy. Glad you're really liking that Marty Reanimator deck. Nice. Yeah, we didn't have the best luck with it. Yeah, it was a two three. I could have just blocked anyways. I'm not about. I'm not about blocking here. If you want to make this Jess guy with the the spirit spawning bird, the problem is is you'd have to play a whole lot more instants and sorceries because you only get spirits from the Jess guy bird whenever you play an instant or a sorcery. So just. Chain Whirler is just going to wreck me. Please, no Chain Whirler.
So yeah, you'd have to switch up the deck quite a bit. Um, I, I would guess that the you'd replace the Dovins. Boo. You would replace the Dovins. With that Jeskai bird. Ugh. If we if we would have been able to untap with our two creatures, you know, we we were gonna be able to play Hanged Executioner, then we would have had four creatures, and then we just played Safara. And I don't think they're beating Safara, seven seven flying lifelinker. So it's all about getting the Safara in play. I summoned the Chain Whirler by saying, Chain Whirler. No, the Jeskai creature says, like, whenever you cast instants and sorceries, you make a bird. I don't think it's non-creature spells. How can we stay alive and cast the Safara? Hey, what's up, kitties? Six months already. You are awesome. Thank you so much. It is non-creature. If our opponent didn't shock our hanged executioner last turn, we would have got there. Come on, no removal, and then us draw a flyer. No removal. Stop. Striking one one ones. All right, we need to draw. We need a top deck hanged executioner again. Tilt. All right, one mana away. Now we need a top deck of land. We need to just chump chump. And we need a top deck of land. Nobody respects settled wreckage. What if I would just had settle there? It's my turn. All right, land drop, land drop. This is just gonna be bad for you. Uh. All right, Drake's coming on in. It's a good deputy matchup. This could be a good Mu Yanling matchup. Probably better than Grand Arbiter. Hmm, that's fine. Maybe not. The executioners are basically good for Safara, but that's kind of about all they're good for. Let's get rid of let's get rid of Morsel Clerics with bringing in the Drakes. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I kind of want to play this card. All it does is just slow them down, and they just bolt it a couple of times, but it slows them down. I don't really know what to take out for it, though. Yeah, Yanling's cool. I want to take out one Curious Obsession. I could be so wrong, but... And one Imperion Eagle. I guess this eagle's better than favorable wins. 
Take out a favorable lens. Hey, Atriant. Welcome back. Thanks for that resub, the continued support there. I appreciate that. Sub number 18. We are really close to our next sub goal. Only two subs away. Now we'll be cracking open a pack. And I'll be adding it towards... Our next 12-hour stream. We're doing a 12-hour stream whenever we hit 20 total sub goals just throughout the days. And we hit two yesterday. We're almost hitting two today. So I know I could shock in to play the Sailor. But I'm not going to do that. I like Deputy Detention here, honestly. It... It forces them, it's just like a card that like forces them to use the burn spell on the deputy. The Foxtrot. Let's get some hype in for the Foxtrot. And SB Murray. Y'all get those hype boats in the chat. Thank you so much for our new subscribers here. All right, we're pack <laughs> cracking a pack after this. And I'll mark that down. So that's our fourth sub goal that we've hit now. Four out of 20 towards the next 12 hour stream. After today. There's an info panel about those. No, nothing nothing my opponent does is going to damage the drake. Basically. My opponent can't damage this drake whatsoever. And Chung resub in here as well. Getting aboard that hypo. Thank you so much. Whoa, we are really on a sub. Uh, I don't What's a lot of boats? An armada? A sub fleet? Thank you all so much. Yeah, I get, yep, I get to block all the creatures with the drake. The drake doesn't take any damage. Like, chain whirler doesn't kill the drake. Nothing does. Oh, well, you're welcome, SB Murray says. Thanks for reminding me why I enjoy MTG so much. It's been a long time since I've played, but I am now reinvested. Awesome. Magic's such a great game. So I can trade the Sailor for the Lava Runner. I don't know if I actually want to make that trade. I think I'll just block the Steamkin and take one. Hmm. I don't want to just draw a card here, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, protection on from protection from red on the blue card is is pretty classic Magic. Red and blue uh, used to have like you know way back in the day, in, like the beginning parts of Magic. Red and blue had like the hate cards against each other. You know, black and white, red and blue. And then green was just kind of like this other color. Green was the color of good. Yeah, 
Yeah, black and white had it like the creatures with like, yeah, black knight, white knight. Blue and red had it more spells. There's like some blue volcano that like blew up a whole bunch of... Blew up like some mountains or something like that. So we have the damage on the Steamkin, so if they want to have the Steamkin activate for mana, then the Steamkin dies. Alright, see ya Steamkin. I'm the best fire starter there is. There's no problem fire can't solve. Hmm. What are we going to do about this, Chandra? Really hope there's no chain whirler here. Sit back and watch it burn. That's fine. Fine ish. How this team can die, because the steam can have one damage on it. And whenever you remove the counters, then it turns back into a 1-1, one, one. and so then it died. I don't know why my opponent didn't attack, to be honest. Alright, so we'll get rid of the Storm Tamer to save that, that damage. Alright, and we'll see if we can beat a Frenzy. But Chandra's off the battlefield, they don't get to reset, you know, they, you know, they don't get to, like, exile the top card. Come on, hit another land. More lands, more lands. Ooh, they hit another land. Dang it, no, I didn't want another land. Yes, yeah, Storm Tamer stopping that was pretty nice, that we got to do the one the one shot at the Chandra, and it wasn't just a bunch of little pings, you know, it was the whole six damage at once. Or right, we can hard cast Safara if we draw Safara, or we have, you know, these Drakes have a few more turns. Of course, if they, if they kill the Empyreon Eagle, then these drakes turn back into 1-1s. One that could be a lot of trouble. That could be my... They kill the eagle. There goes the spirits also. Yeah, land for a land. I'm I'm good trading land for a land here. The problem is, of course, they, they got that frenzy. Alright, so we got to get rid of this thing. 
Um, so if I get rid of the Lava Runner right now, I assume they have another spell in here, right? Yeah. So Lava Runners are attacking for two and then two. Next turn, Chain Willer is just attacking for three. So in three turns, the Lava Runner, the Chain Willer does as much as the Lava Runner, you know, six and six. So yeah, we'll just get rid of a two-two right now. Saves the most life. Still hoping we draw Safara. Or a Lord effect. Pump up these drakes. Or a Glacial Fortress. I can sack a Drake to counter a burn spell up, stop, up top like that. Sack it, counter a spell that targets us. This is not good. We've drawn too many lands over here. Not good at all. So if they hit anything off of the Frenzy, or if they just sacrifice their Frenzy and have any spell in hand, anything we lose. So, Sir Yulin Drake, while protection from red is awesome, you really get to see that, that match, just how weak a 1-1 one -one creature is. And how how little a one one creature just actually matters. Oh, let's let's get the pack. Get the pack. Get the pack. Thanks, Mitchin. Thanks for that resub there. I almost forgot. Get a pack because we hit our second sub goal. Pack. All right. Let's see if we get a mythic. Yeah, there you go, Mitchin. Temple of Epiphany. That's a good card. It's definitely a card that I need, for sure. So there we go. That's a good one. We'll take it. All right. So 3-1 there. 23 here. This is such a good Curious Obsession target. So I did take out one Obsession. And, and yeah, that's, that's true that with having the pro-red creature with Obsession is just perfect. So... I don't think I should have taken out an obsession. Yeah, next time we sideboard against Red, I'm not going to take one out. Okay, the winds look to be favorable in our matchup here. Uh, I don't I don't really know Lu Wei. No, I like I like the Dovin's vetoes in that matchup. Um, 
the the three mana creatures. I think we maybe could have taken out one of those. Still. So this this basically attacks for one and then two next turn, or like I guess one then three. This is better just to play this thing first. Get the extra bodies that both get pumped up next turn. Even more. Yes, Naga or Nagu. Yep, Safar is the angel where you can tap the other flyers to play her. We had all the lands to play here that other game against Mono Red. I mean, honestly, our sideboard should probably have, like, Lyra Dombringers and stuff like that I'm no in our sideboard for the red matchup. I've got time. I guess I can't really hold up God's Willing. I'll protect Two, you. four, six, eight, ten. Where are they at? What are they at? Ten. Good old Flyers. All right, so they're playing like Bant Ramp. Um, Deputy Attention is usually pretty good against Bant Ramp. I don't know if I really want to be spell piercing or maybe even like, like, do I even want like the instant speed interaction here with like vetoes and God's Willings and stuff like that? With them having little Teferi and then not a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, I like the Deputies. But I don't. I don't know if I really want God's Willings or Vetoes too much. Yeah, hitting. Yeah, hitting Nissa on curve with Spell Pierce would be. Super clutch. Let's try that over um, over the God's Willings. Now we haven't brought in Moo. Yanling. Yet. That's the card that should probably just be Lyra's in the sideboard, honestly. I mean, we're keeping this. I don't really know what card I'm getting rid of. I, I guess I have to get rid of one of the three mana cards. Guess it's Dovin. The Hanged Executioner can certainly save us against a big creature. You know, a Shalai, Lyra, that kind of stuff. They can't play Teferi next turn with having GG for the lands. Play Anissa. So 
was, yeah, Spell Pierce did the same kind of thing that God's Willing would have. Gosh. That was a bunch of lands in a row. No, don't have Nissa now. Ah, crisis. Well. Boom. Opponent blows up, and we're going to take the win. We are four and one. And we are facing our first final boss of the day. We're, we're not trying to protect. We wouldn't be trying to protect Mu Yanling. Mu would just be protecting our life total and slowing the opponent's, like, they're playing like a, a aggro deck on the ground. It would slow them down. They like attack the the planeswalker. It'd slow their clock down from killing us, and let our flyers win a race. That's what it would do. Final boss music. Let's go. Keep. I'm loving the Spectral Sailor. But yeah, even against those aggro decks, the Lyra Dawnbringer is probably just going to be a lot better for us, honestly. I think that's safe to say. Like The, the one thing, of course, is Lyra it does cost 5 mana, so there will be games like that we'd have it in hand and not be able to play it. Red. Do I trade? I kind of think I do. Gotta play that before Chain Whirler kills my stuff. All of our creatures are X1s, which are so bad against Chain Whirler. Wah. <laughs> hey, what's up, Stalking? Thanks for the sub there. Sub 24, and we're on our way to our third goal of the night. Yeah, I don't know why they changed the graphic size to look like this for the 60 card deck now. After seeing it so long for the other size, this looks pretty weird. So yeah, I don't I don't know what like a, you know, 150 card deck would look like 
Maybe they just all look the same. Oh, you did? You ran into a 150-card deck during Popper event? Well, that was probably before the update. Because, like, before the update, or, like, yeah, before the update, they were all a lot smaller than this. And this is what this is what the really big decks looked like. You know, like, this is what, like, the 100, 150-card decks looked like was like this. But now this is what the 50 ones look like. So I wonder what 150 looks. Have y'all seen it after the update? 150? It goes off screen? What happened to the opponent? Nine cards. The opponent disconnect. They couldn't handle my my flash spirit pirates coming in and blocking their creatures. They're like a Viachino we wizard would never die to a spirit pirate. Everybody knows that, and they just disconnected. Couldn't handle it. Probably not what happened. If we get a win... Was that our final boss win? Wow. That was... A disappointing final boss. Y'all ever... You know, play those games like... Uh, for myself, it was like whenever I played... Uh, playing just Zelda Breath of the Wild that I put so much time into and everything. And then, you know, you get to uh, get to the final boss. And you're just like, wait, that's it? Like, just a real easy fight. <laughs> Till concede to Spirit Pirate. And you know you're on you're on like level ninety, and they have the boss set for somebody who's like supposed to like to try to be able to win at like level like thirty five. And you're like, like that was way too easy. All right, well, deck was pretty sweet. This deck was fun to play. Um, I think I think Lyra Dawnbringer would be better than Mu Yanling in the sideboard. I'd recommend playing those. Lyra's just so good. The Drakes were like, you know, not amazing. The Cerulean, Cerule Cerulean, the Cerulean Drakes. But if we had the Curious Obsession on on it, it would have definitely made it better. Um, there. Yeah, fun deck here. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, so that's it here for Safara Spirits. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you for another video.